bring in Michelle Malkin, columnist and investigative journalist. Hey, Michelle. Hi there. I appreciated that intro. You know, Thank you know you. in baseball, you get to pick your own music when you walk up to the plate. Did you pick that song? <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> one, one of our producers did. Hey, Michelle, uh, years ago you wrote that book uh, called Invasion, talking about the immigration problems here in the United States. Uh, there's a story out this morning. Uh, one of the people who was in the caravan uh, has since been uh, released into the United States. Apparently, a 19-year-old pregnant woman from Honduras by the name of Mary Uri Hernandez was arrested after she entered uh, Imperial Beach, California. She apparently climbed climbed over the border wall from Tijuana. As soon as she was uh, down on the ground in uh, American soil, she was arrested. Um, and a couple of days later, apparently, she gave birth to an American citizen. And she said that uh, her goal was to join her family in Columbus, Ohio, and giving birth on U.S. soil was a big reward for the long journey in the caravan. What do you say about that? Well, that is the anchor baby problem, and President Trump has been right about this. He diagnosed automatic birthright citizenship as one of the biggest magnets and incentives to come here and break the law, and he's been asking Congress to do something about it. Uh, you can build 50-foot, 100-foot walls all along the 2,000 miles of the southern border, but if you don't turn off these magnets, it's going to result in a continued flow, and we're going to see these caravans over and over and over again. Um, it is time to rethink automatic birthright citizenship. It's an anomaly around the world. There are only 30 nations that have it. And among advanced industrial nations, there are only two, the U.S. and Canada. You know, for all of the open borders transnationalists who are always urging us to adopt the culture and practices of, of the rest of the world, this is one of the areas where they're clinging bitterly to, um, you know, Know, a strange interpretation of the 14th Amendment. And look, my, my parents came here legally. My father was a neonatologist, and he was outraged because in his practice in Atlantic City, he saw women from around the world. It's not just women from South and Central America who are abusing uh, this uh, policy. It's people from Kenya or Russia or, or Korea who wait until they're eight and a half months pregnant to board a plane to get here. So it's not just something that uh, affects the, the border. It's not just something that a wall will fix. Uh, and unfortunately, people in both parties don't want to address it. All right, let's talk about Kristen Gillibrand. She's a senator, uh, Democrat, New York. She condemned Bill Clinton for Monica Lewinsky. She wanted to stop Judge Kavanaugh. And she just tweeted this, our future is female, intersectional, powered by our belief in one another, and we're just getting started. Is that the future? I hope not, Ainsley. This sounds more like the tweet of an Oberlin College sophomore, and I went to Oberlin, so I know what the uh, radical feminists uh, talked about. And this is essentially an anti-male, grievance-wallowing dog whistle. People don't understand the history of this slogan, which sounds really cute, and you want to put it on a T-shirt for your daughter and and uh, make it seem as if as as if you are all about female empowerment. But it's it's about much more than that. I say it's a dog whistle because the slogan actually came from the 1970s and it was uh, a feminist bookstore owner who sold shirts with uh, this phrase and then put a portion of the the uh, revenue uh, towards donating to Planned Parenthood um, and you know what this really about is pandering to the far left extreme and if that's how the Democrats think they're gonna beat President Trump keep saying it. That's all I can say. Yeah, why would you shut off 48 percent of the country? Uh, meanwhile, Senator Maziarono, enjoying her moment of fame from the Brett Kavanaugh hearings and beyond, said this the other day on how the, uh, what the Democrats' big problem is. We uh, Democrats uh, have a really hard time uh, is connecting to people's hearts instead of here. We Democrats know so much that is true, and we have to kind of <laughs> tell everybody how smart we are. Yeah, uh, that, is, that, is that an effective message? 
Um, again, I would really like these women, Maisie Hirono and, and Kirsten Gillibrand, to keep blabbing. Um, this is somebody, of course, we've talked about Maisie Hirono before, who's told all men to, quote unquote, shut up. Uh, and the sense of, of condescension and elitism that comes out of her pores every time she's in front of a microphone is just going to turn off normal, everyday people in flyover country. You know, there was a study uh, that came out last week that contrasted the difference between how liberals and conservatives uh, talk, especially to minorities. And what they found is that liberals um, have an almost racist sense when they approach people because of their sense of intellectual superiority. And here we go with Maisie Hirono telling everybody that they can't connect with voters because they're too smart and know too much. And they're too dumb. Voters are too yeah. dumb for our <laughs> smarts. Right. Yeah, this worked really well in 2016. Please keep going. Well, let's see what they do in 2020. All right, uh, <laughs> listen, Michelle Malkin, always a pleasure. Thank you very much for Thanks, joining Michelle. us from yeah. out west on this wet, That's uh, right. Thursday. Has anyone seen Carly Shimkus? I she's have. She's about three feet from you. Oh. Hey, Carly. Hey, how are you guys? So an important story to get to here. The UN set to vote on a resolution condemning Hamas. If adopted, it would be the first time the assembly has taken action against the Palestinian terror group. The measure, which recently won crucial backing from the EU, condemns Hamas for firing rockets into Israel. The leader of Hamas calls it an effort to delegitimize Palestinian resistance. A stash of secret emails reveals Facebook put profits over your privacy. The UK Parliament released hundreds of pages of previously sealed documents, some showing that the social media giant discussed selling personal information to app developers. Now, they valued each user's data at 10 cents each. The company says it never followed through with the plan. And PETA is likening eating a hamburger to causing wildfires. The animal rights group praising a Los Angeles councilman who wants to require entertainment complexes to provide vegan options on their menus. Now, he thinks it will help combat climate change. PETA is loving it, saying devastating wildfires are a sign we must do more to protect the planet and that animal agriculture is, quote, one of the most, if not the most significant contributor to environmental issues. And a little girl gets a lesson in tough love when she's kicked off her bus for bullying. Let me make this extremely clear. Bullying is unacceptable. So today, my beautiful daughter is going to walk five miles to school in 36 degree weather. Oh no, well the Ohio dad says he wanted to hold his daughter accountable after she was kicked off the bus for the second time. This video has been viewed 15 million times on Facebook and this has a lot of you talking this morning, mm -hmm. of course. Yeah, I saw you checking the social media, so this is what Carly came up with and these are the response to that story. Joel writes this, uh, the child was monitored for the entire five mile journey and was never in any real danger unless you call a learning experience dangerous because we had brought up before, wait a second, is it, is it kind of crazy to last five miles in that weather? And then Ronald says, I believe the punishment is okay. Do not agree with posting it on the net. That's right. Because because it will be on the net forever. And Joan writes, not too far and not too cold. Today's kids are too lazy. She can benefit from a brisk walk. All right, Joan, thank you very much. <laughs> Plus, it's, if it's cold outside and you're walking five miles, you're not going to be that cold. Well, that's Have you ever exercised true. outside when it's cold? I, I know. You start it's to sweat. When, it's when you're standing still like Janice Dean is right now. When it's cold, <laughs> that's right. cold. And Sometimes you, just, you, you jump, jump up and down. Yeah. Hi, you guys. Are you, are you warm? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, thank you for being here. And you guys just got married. Tell me your names and where you're from. Good. Amy Sparks and Zach Ritter, and we're from Bentonville, Arkansas. Very nice. And so this is your honeymoon? This is our honeymoon, and it's also Amy's mother's birthday, Suzette. Happy birthday, Suzette. Very nice. Well, many happy years, my friends. All right, let's take a look at the map to see how cold it is outside. Uh, yes, so this is windchill, what it feels like against your skin if you're not protected. So, yeah, we're talking about teens and single digits. All of that cold air is going to sink southward and we're going to have a big winter storm my friends that's starting today California this is going to move towards the east and the central and southern plains could get walloped with not only heavy rain and flooding conditions but we could see some ice and some heavy snow especially across the Appalachians so we'll watch for that over the next couple of days there will be travel delays here's your forecast today uh, across the California region lots of rain and heavy snow and then we could see some lake effect snow thank you all for coming today happy holidays Thank you. hi wave to Steve Ainsley and Brian.
Hi, everyone. Uh, That'll warm Hello. you up. The waving. Yay. They're all bundled. That's the key. All right. That's the key. Got to cover the mouth. Layers. You got to cover the ears, the yeah. hands, the body. And cover it to the point where you're not enjoying yourself. <laughs> Just your eyes. Muffled. Just and muffled. And sometimes you wear sunglasses. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, meanwhile, straight ahead, Senator Bernie Sanders has a lot to say about climate change. <laughs> Oh. The future of the planet is at stake. Climate change is directly related to the growth of terrorism. With all that talk about climate change, how does Bernie explain spending more than $300,000 on traveling on private jets? <laughs> Plus, we've got more mega morning deals for